everybody, it's me, Zach, this is Judy, and welcome back to our channel. Hey everybody, it's me, Zach, and we're back again to take another dive into the 1,000 pound cinematic universe to watch our favorite besties, Vanessa, Ashley, Tina, and Megan. Are y'all ready? <laughs> Are y'all ready for another, another strange, fun, and exciting week of 1,000 pound best friends on TLC? Because I sure am. <laughs> we're here, we're here, we're here. So if you don't remember, last episode ended on Vanessa and Tina just like beefing. They are beefing because Vanessa got naked at this campsite, whoever, whatever. And that's where it left off, and it was kind of like, ooh, like very high intensity, lots of emotions, whoever, whatever. I was kind of curious where people were gonna fall in terms of like which person's side, whoever, whatever was on. And a lot of people in the comments of my video, at least, seemed to like side more with what Tina had to say. It kind of felt like they were more understanding of what was going on with her, which I like 100% understand myself personally like for me that's a big boundary thing right like I feel like Tina had communicated what her boundaries were and Vanessa just straight up didn't respect them and so regardless of like how much I want to encourage people to like freely talk about sex and feel comfortable talking about sex you also can't like make other people uncomfortable and cross the boundaries when it comes to that. I feel like a lot of the sex positive people I know in my life understand the concept of like people having boundaries, respecting things like consent, which like for me, if a person got naked around me, like without my consent, I would be really uncomfortable. But either way, that's where we left off. And I honestly, truly was expecting to pick like right back up from there. Somebody said in the comments of my last video last week that they were wanting to see the the ride home and I just assumed that we would get to see the ride home because you got to imagine that the four of those women in the van on the way home in the van that they came in I mean that was already tense on the way there because Vanessa was annoying Tina who was driving you got to imagine that it was tense on the way home but for whatever reason TLC didn't show us that. <laughs> we, we didn't get to see the ride home. I literally replied to the person who commented last week and it said, oh, well, like, I feel like if we tune in next week, we'll get to see it. Because we got so many fights and arguments and car rides home on 1,000 Pound Sisters, I just assumed we would see it continued here. But maybe nothing happened. Maybe they sat in silence the whole way home and it gave them nothing to put on TV. Because this week's episode starts off with Vanessa and Megan actually in a car and they are on their way to go work out together. Totally just like skipped over the whole process of coming home from the camping <laughs> trip. So I don't know what that was about. Feels like a missed opportunity from TLC in my opinion. But like I said, this episode started off with Megan and Vanessa going to like a local community center to work out. It looks like they walked around like an indoor track and Megan does talk about how she still has to use her oxygen occasionally, especially in situations like this where she's like, working out <laughs> so she she seems to like be a little bit regretful that like you know losing a bunch of weight hasn't gotten her completely dependent from the oxygen but if you watched the episode of too large that megan and vanessa were on like she was using it at all times so i think she should feel like somewhat better about the fact that like she's not using it 24 7 you know what i'm saying they also do this moment where they talk about looking like zombies walking up these stairs you won't like me we d we won't like we're zombies yes we go one leg, one. pull. Pull. One, one leg, pull. pull. Well, anytime I'm oh, we're dragging a dead corpse or something. <laughs> and honestly, after a certain amount of stairs, I probably look like a zombie myself, if we're being honest. But Vanessa brought some ankle weights for her and Megan to use while they're walking around this track. And, okay, whatever, who cares, but... What I noticed whenever they put them on is like, Megan, what are those? How are you, how are you working out in these like flirty, cute little sandals that you'd wear to like church or a picnic? I don't, I don't understand how you were working out in those. Your feet are going to be all kinds of fucked up. And then they also use this as a moment for the two women to check in with each other about different things happening in 
really Vanessa's life. So Megan's like, listen, I need to know what's going on with you and Tina because y'all are my friends and I need y'all to, to like each other, get along. So like, what's going on? And Vanessa talks more about like, feeling like she was judged and things like that, which I, I don't know. I do to the extent understand that, that like Tina was saying that she didn't want people to look at her the way that they look at Vanessa, which is kind of judgy, right? Like she's making a judgment about Vanessa and saying like, I don't want people to associate me with your behavior and who you are as a person. So I, I get that to some extent, like that is kind of judgy. But also, I think Tina is just uncomfortable with boundaries being crossed. And they also talk about Vanessa wanting to move out still. And I guess, like, this is going to start this little arc that happens in this, this episode where multiple times we find out that Jackie really blames Megan for Vanessa wanting to, like, get healthy, get surgery, move out, whoever, whatever. And so there's a lot of, like, animosity building up there <laughs> for the very end of the episode where really, like, the climax of that particular drama happens. I do appreciate that when Vanessa is like, well, listen, she's going to be, Jackie's going to be so mad at me. Jackie, Jackie's going to be so mad at me that Megan's like, well, I'm also going to be mad at you. Like, if you don't move out, <laughs> I'm going to be pissed at you and mad at you and not talk to you. She really, like, presents it like, either way, you got to do what's really right for you, so you make that choice. <laughs> but also, like, I can say the same things that Jackie says. I can also peace out of your life, just like Jackie. Which, I don't know, maybe an ultimatum isn't the best thing, but, like, I feel like that's what Jackie's doing anyways. <laughs> so what are you going to do? So then we get a real quick scene that kind of helps set up some of the like sexy time moments of this this episode, which by the way, if this the sex talk and everything like that makes you uncomfortable, then I really just don't think that 1000 Pound Besties is going to be your show because we're four episodes in now and every single episode has had some kind of sexual reference, sexual moment, sexual situation. So it's just like... I would say check out at this point if that's too much for you. But they do show the room that Megan and her fiance are living in in Tina's house and it literally looks like a storage space. Like it literally looks like like one of those storage, you know, those store, what do they call those things? Storage units? It looks like a store, like, have you ever watched Storage Wars? <laughs> Did y'all ever watch that where like, people didn't pay for the rent on their storage units and then people go in and bid and they auction off all the stuff inside the storage unit? It kind of looked like that. It kind of looked like that. And so they talk about how, you know, that's not really a great, a great environment, atmosphere, ambiance. To, to have sexy times. What kind of romantic can we do in this room, right? It's a storage room. Sexy time, right? Unless the side of boxes get you turned on. <laughs> <laughs> but I think more so than that, it's related to like Megan's self-confidence and Megan's thoughts around her visual image and like her body image and her appearance and I think she has some stuff to work out there, but I do appreciate that she's like so open and honest with it because I feel like a lot of people probably relate to that experience. And so I think more so than it is all of the boxes and the room that they're staying in, I think it's more so about Megan's own confidence. We also do get a scene where Vanessa and Tina make up and listen, Vanessa strolls into this little, I don't know if it's like a, co if a coffee shop, a juice, a juice shop, a smoothie shop. I don't know exactly what they're doing or where they're at, but Vanessa walks up and she's wearing my favorite piece of fabric that she calls a shirt that barely hung on in the very first episode. She offended me and hurt my feelings really bad. We may not be able to resolve this situation at all. And she just walks in and it's so awkward and uncomfy because because Tina's just chilling there. <laughs> and the way Vanessa walks in is just so weird and uncomfortable. Hey. I'm extremely nervous. She was so upset at the campsite. She got so angry. Tina's the one that starts off by apologizing and saying she overreacted. And I think that she probably also wasn't really understanding why Vanessa was upset, at least at this point, because she, she goes back to saying like, 
I just didn't want my kids to think that I was anything like you. Like, I didn't want people to think I was anything like you. And I think that's the crux of, like, what Vanessa was upset about. It's like, essentially, Tina made it sound like she didn't want to be associated with, like, who Vanessa was as a person. Which might be true, but, like, it is, it is missing the point, right? <laughs> it is really missing the point of, like, why Vanessa was upset. But then Vanessa didn't really communicate things well either because she clarified by claiming that she felt like Tina was saying all of this. Um, all I heard was, you're a sorry piece of I'm better than you. I really would never say that. Oh, I know I now. I don't believe that. I know now. But in my head, I was just enraged. I know. And it's like, literally, also, though, that's not what Tina said, right? Like, that, I, I understand why Vanessa felt that way, but that's quite literally, like, that never came out of Tina's mouth. <laughs> that, like, never did. But Tina does note that because she's been a mom for 17 years, she's she's been in a certain, like, frame of mind, in a certain mindset, like, her her brain is like, I'm a mom, I'm a mom, I'm a mom, and that's like all she all she thinks about. And so she does want to try to loosen up, be a little bit more open, a little bit more understanding, and ultimately the two of them do make up. But I do think that Vanessa still doesn't quite understand <laughs> where Tina's coming from because she's already in this scene plotting for ways to get Tina to be a little bit more loose. Maybe that will bring you out to where we can take you not mama for a minute. Make you back to You look Tina. like you're really looking forward to that. I am, I am. People just don't know like I'm like, no. <laughs> And then the scene ends with them taking like wheatgrass shots. I, I don't know, it felt very weird and out of place, but they did it. And I guess it bonded them or something. I don't know. They, they seem to have been besties again after they did it. And of course, we couldn't make it out. And again, I don't know if Vanessa is really, you know, learning a whole lot from this situation because before they leave, Vanessa asks an employee if he will strip for her. I just All those girls got to come have us little girls night here. Will you strip for us? I can get you some. Okay. That's no. a good idea until you took it there. Right, thank you all so much. Thank you. He didn't say no. So I kind of thought we were going to be able to take a little bit of a break before we jumped right back into the sexual things. But of course, the very next scene in this episode is all of the girls going to a sex shop. I want to show Megan every penis in the shop. Oh my God. Every I shop. hope there are no living dudes in there. Oh my God. I hope there are. So the goal for this trip is to help Megan elevate her sex life and get her sexy back. So we'll see if that actually helps or happens. But also Vanessa wants to help Tina loosen up. And so this is like, I guess her first mission is to bring her to this sex shop that's surrounded by, like just fully immerse her in the experience. And you know, I think of all four women, Ashley is the one that's always speaking the most sense, at least to me, because they're having a conversation about Megan feeling good, looking good, and feeling weird about talking about sex and whoever, whatever. And Ashley makes a great point that everybody's in the sex shop for the same reason. So if people are judging you for being in here, like, I'm judging you. Every consenting adult has sex. I don't care what you look like. One limb, no limb, blind, straight, gay, it, you, everybody. Everybody so has sex. I understand that that's a, a big fear, but you could be wondering how they do it. But I did chuckle that Megan was like, listen, <laughs> listen, I, I'm gonna need more than like some toys. Like, I, I need confidence and do they sell that here? Unless they sell confidence in a lube, I don't know if this is gonna help. But yeah, this scene in general is hard to watch, not because they're talking about sex, but because everything is blurred out. <laughs> like, my eyes were hurting so bad trying to figure out what to focus on while I was watching this scene. Very difficult for me to watch. Actually, truly, honestly, ever since I got my concussion, like, 
my eyes have been way more sensitive to light and things like that and like images and blurry images so it was very difficult for me to focus during this scene. Vanessa claims she has like a ton of knowledge also to to drop on Megan uh, but she's like trying to rein it in for Tina and not go too over the top. I have a lot of questions about her knowledge and listen, I'm not going to include too many clips from this scene because I don't know what YouTube will think about it. I don't know what YouTube will think about me even talking about it to be honest with you. But what I do have to say, what I do have to say is Vanessa claims she has all of this knowledge on all, all of this sex stuff, but then she points at a package with um, some beads that go in a certain cavity the back door, okay? And she points at them and says that they are a plug. That they are a plug. The, a, a plug and beads, they do both usually go in the same area, but serve different purposes. So I was just like, do, are you, do you have the knowledge to drop? Do you, Vanessa? I'm just curious. And we also do get a lot of shots of Tina like wandering around the store looking uncomfortable and there are so many clips in this scene that I would love to include for comedy purposes in this YouTube video. But like I said, I just don't, I just don't want to face the wrath of YouTube. So what I will say is Megan leaves with a fun toy called the Showstopper and she says, if nothing else, I'm gonna have fun with my toy. I, that's it. And also Vanessa says that she's looking forward to moving out of Jackie's house so that she can have some more private alone time with some toys from the store. So, you know, we have that to look forward to as well. <laughs> we get a brief clip of Ashley and Tina talking to each other and Ashley does acknowledge she's had some cheat days here and there, but she's not trying to make them like cheat weeks. And Tina talks about how she feels like living with Megan is a little bit difficult when it comes to both of their progress, when it comes to their weight loss journeys, because if they're both doing great, they're both doing great. And if they're both doing bad, then they're both doing really bad. You know what I'm saying? So it sounds like they're kind of like feeding off of each other, living in their environment. And we find out that Ashley finds a workout group called Barbarian Burn. And I don't know, maybe she did, but I always find it so sus when, when the women on this show or even on the 1000 pound sisters talk about how they found something some kind of activity to do as though tlc didn't plan that all out like as though tlc didn't call ahead and say hey we want to film here in three days can we do this are the employees here willing to be on camera whoever whatever so i find i always find that very funny to me and, and like they're not going out and vetting it to make sure it'll actually be something that's like entertaining for the show I, I don't know, for me, maybe that's like nitpicking. I just think it's, I just find it amusing how reality television works. But Tina is already pretty skeptical just based off the name Barbarian Burn that like there's gonna be some high intensity nonsense involved and she's not wrong, <laughs> she's not wrong. So they go to this Barbarian Burn workout at this gym and let me just say, everybody that works in this fucking gym is hot. Every single, every single person. I'm just like, y'all are so attractive. Like, I will go, I will go get my barbarian burn on if I'm gonna look as attractive as y'all do when it's all said and done. So before they, before they get their workout on, Vanessa feels the need to ask Megan about her and her fiance's workout. <laughs> like, how are they working out, you know? Uh, Megan says that she's still feeling very self-conscious, that she doesn't like feel super comfortable and she says that she also knows that John, her fiance, would want her to be more confident. And actually, Vanessa says a lot of nonsense a lot of the time, but Vanessa had a great response to her. Baby, I, we don't care what John wants. At this you moment. need to be more confident yeah. in yourself for nobody in this room, nobody outside but for yourself. Like you absolutely, for sure, want to feel confident for your partner, but also you need to feel confident for yourself, baby girl. Like that's also so important. And I think that that's what all of your friends want you to see. So the workout starts out very chill. And then out of nowhere, this man just comes in banging on a drum, no idea why. Not sure how, how this is motivating to be honest, but he just comes out 
and he's banging on a drum and another guy's yelling. They're both hot as fuck, but they're just like yelling and banging. And I'm just like, oh my God. Much like Vanessa, I would also do whatever these men need. When these men come in, my brain goes straight to, I will do whatever you tell me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What do you need, sir? Yes, sir. But I have to say, it's actually very impressive how much these women are doing in this workout. Like, I do, I don't do a lot of those things in my own personal workout, but one of the things that I do with my trainer is the battle ropes that they were doing, the ones that go like this, like you, like, whatever. And it looks like it should be easy, but then you you do that for like 30 seconds straight without stopping and it is, it's a workout y'all it is a workout so yeah i think it's just cool to see them actually working out and they they i feel like they film scenes where they're working out like all the time i mean this episode literally started off with Vanessa and Megan working out and now they're doing all of this and we've seen it in other episodes as well so I appreciate that they're like putting in the work and trying and doing things. The The drama though of this scene is that Tina doesn't deal well with the like high intensity yelling from the trainers. I was like starting to realize like something was up because it all kind of started making sense because I thought back to it and she also like, so she walks off because the, the trainers are yelling and she just like can't deal with it. But if you think about it, that was also her response to when Vanessa was like just yelling and screaming. She just like straight up walked off and like went and took time to collect herself. And it's clear that she has had like some things happen in her past. Well, she ends up saying it on the show, but before she said it, I was like, she must have experienced some kind of trauma related to like people just yelling and screaming because this has now been her response to that multiple times. And she talks about how she grew up with like men just yelling and screaming around her and how the experience of having the trainers yell at her was actually not motivating and very triggering for her. And I, I do have to say, like, I think that that yelling and stuff can be motivating to some people. Like, I think some people do like that kind of experience. I will also say that I work with a personal trainer twice a week and he does not yell at me like that at all. And my workouts are very effective and helpful. So I just like, I, I think it's also possible to get in a really good intense workout without having somebody yelling at you. And it does seem like the trainers, after they realized like how they were impacting Tina, like it seems like they did cut back because we saw a clip later of him being like, hey, it's like my voice volume is that everything chills, everything fine. So it seems like the trainers and everything were responsive to like what was going on with Tina. So I appreciate that as well. And I do say this every week or I've said this every week so far, but I appreciate how supportive they all were of each other. Like they checked in with Tina after the situation happened and then they were all like very supportive and cheering each other on to like finish their workouts and do what, what they came to do. So I don't know, it's just like, I guess a breath of fresh air compared to the 1000 Pound Sisters, where at least in the last season it felt like it was like Tammy against the world and like everybody was trying to support Tammy and nobody, Tammy was trying to support nobody else. And then we get to the end of the episode, which is Vanessa moving out. She said, listen, I'm, I found a place, we're going, we're doing it. We're going. They did show a weird clip of her like flipping stuff to sell, like going to a thrift store, buying stuff and trying to like flip it and sell it for more money, which I thought was interesting because they also showed in the two large episodes she was on that the way she made money was to go scrapping essentially and like collect metal and trash and then go sell it. So. Uh, interesting forms of income for Miss Vanessa, but I guess whatever works. But she does move. She has saved up some money. She's got to where she needs to go, and she is moving out. And on the way for them to, like, go with, the, like, the U-Haul or whatever they're driving to pack up all of the stuff, Vanessa does share once again with Megan that Jackie blames Megan, that Jackie blames Megan for Vanessa even having this thought or idea to get weight loss surgery to move out whoever, whatever, which is just really unfair, but it's clear that the relationship between Jackie and Vanessa is like very codependent and toxic. So it's not a surprise to me that Jackie, that Jackie is blaming Megan for all of this because she's just looking for someone to take her anger out on. So Megan and Vanessa and Vanessa's kids, they're all like 
doing all the heavy lifting, packing, packing up this van full of Vanessa's stuff. And Jackie comes out to yell at Megan, and I'm just going to do my best to condense down all the clips from that because Jackie girl is unhinged. So I guess you won. It's not like Everything that, Everything your way, Megan. Everything it's, your way. It's not like that. What am I supposed to do now? You know what? No. We do all this together, and I have to do it all by myself? Yeah, get she's going to die like this. Oh, she's going to die now. Because I'm it's not nice. I'm glad that it went good listening. for you, but that don't mean it's going to go good for she her. She can die and she don't get it's help. Get her away from me. Now she, I'm doing. giving her back to you. Okay, everything worked out for you, Megan. And, I don't know, for me personally, I feel like Megan's the one with, like, clearly having Vanessa's best interests at at hand. Like, it seems like she's got a clearer mind and is the one that's actually really looking out Vanessa for Vanessa. I mean, granted, it could just be edited that way and presented to us that way on this reality TV show. But Megan is, like, trying to say, like, Jackie, I love you, too. Like, I care about you both. Like, we need to think about what's best for Vanessa. And, like, Vanessa's making this decision. And Jackie's just shouting and blaming and yelling. <laughs> and, and just so much. So, yeah, Jackie, what are we doing? Jackie. 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 Jackie! And that's that. Like, it ends there with them yelling. So I assume we'll get more insight into Vanessa's new home in the next episode. I do vaguely remember the previews. Usually I take a few notes about what happened on the previews, but I just looked at my document on my computer. I'm like, I have no notes about the previews. But if I remember correctly, it looks like they're taking another trip next week, which I find to be fascinating. But they're going to Florida and there's also more nudity. I do remember seeing Vanessa, I think, and Tina, and maybe Megan getting spray tans. So, like I said, if if the sex stuff is not for you, then maybe the show is not for you. Because they just, they just won't let us breathe. They will give us two seconds without some kind of sexual related content, you know? So that's all I have. Let me know what you're thinking about the series so far. I am still enjoying it. I, I am having fun. It feels like a much lighter version of 1,000 Pound Sisters, like a little less heavy with the drama, although it has potential for, for some of that drama. So I'm curious, how are you feeling? Are you watching it? Are you enjoying it? Are you just watching me because you like watching me? If so, I appreciate that as well. If this is your first video on my channel, make sure to subscribe down below. Hit the bell button so you get notifications every single time I post a new video. I do have a 1,000 pound besties playlist that has all of the videos I've made about it so far, so I'll leave that in a pinned comment down below. Make sure to leave me a comment, hit like, click share, follow me on all of my social media, and check out my merch. Uh, I had so much fun today. I hope you did too, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!